Hello, crypto boys and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptomancer, where we feature content on play to earn games on the blockchain, such as Splinterlands. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about Waka Spirit Blade, what he might mean to the card meta in Splinterlands, and how you might want to prepare for his arrival into the arenas so first off let's talk about waka waka is a legendary death summoner three mana he's going to grant the poison ability to all of his team members and he's going to be available soon we're actually going to find out tomorrow how much his cost is going to be in vouchers and sps but he's going to be available as a max level summoner and he's going to be limited to only 1000 copies of him in the game so let's just do a quick refresher on what his ability is going to provide to your team your attacks are going to have a chance to apply poison and this will do automatic damage to the target at the beginning of each round after the poison is applied now the poison ability is triggered 50 percent of the time and it's not affected by shield or void so it's definitely a very powerful ability definitely one that can ramp up passive damage on your opponent and just decimate them uh, in a few rounds so i wanted to talk about if waka wasn't in the game or coming to the game how you could build an existing death poison team and what it would look like and this chart basically summarizes my findings and you basically have eight options if you wanted to create a death team that was all poison based today now you can see here the team would consist of a giant scorpion a horny toad Venari Bonesmith, Dr. Blight, Haunted Spider, Soul Strangler, Skeleton Assassin, and Uraeus as your team options. Now, if we look across this chart, we see a couple of things that stand out. One is from an advantage perspective, all of these monsters that could bring poison to your death team today are low mana cost. The highest mana cost here is four, and the lowest mana cost here is three. Now, from a disadvantage perspective of running this team today, you have low durability monsters. When I say durability, I'm talking about the combination of armor plus health. Pretty much everyone on this team has three to four health or less, with the exception of the giant scorpion. Additionally, the team's average speed is three or less, with the only exception being the skeleton assassin. So it's not a very fast team. And if you look at where the attacks can poison your opponent, it really can only affect two positions, the first and the last position of your opponent's team. So this is probably why this team is not seen in the meta today because of these many disadvantages. But let's talk about you know, with Waka Spirit Blade, what a general team strategy might look like with this new summoner. Uh, the first thing you're probably going to want to do with this team is be able to spread poison to as many opponents as possible to maximize your passive damage through poison. Secondly, you're going to want to strike fast and strike first. And third, you're going to want to try and be as durable as possible so you can let that poison do its work. Now, with Waka Spirit Blade, a couple comments here with abilities. It's unknown if Blast will spread poison. My guess is it won't, but we'll have to see. And it's not likely that Backfire or Life Leech will work with Waka's summoner ability. Um, retaliate, however, should poison your opponents. Now, that being said, let's take a look at how the meta and the landscape will change with death with Waka in both the modern and wild league formats. These are some examples of new options for death at the diamond plus league levels. This is what the card stats are showing what it would look like for a possible Waka poison meta. So you've got 
your Pelicor Deceiver very fast at five speed with backfire and retaliate, being able to do poison to your opponent's tank. You've got the Gorlodon with reach, six melee damage, and true strike, being able to also poison your opponent's tank. You've got the Supply Runner here with swiftness and strength and speeding up your team and applying potentially a poison to your opponent's tank. You've got Leer of the Dark here at six speed with opportunity and swiftness, speeding up your team, applying poison to somewhere in your opponent's lineup. You've got the Parasitic Growth here with Scavenge and opportunity here. Great synergies with Waka because the opportunity again, spreading poison across the team and the Scavenge the poison is likely going to be killing a lot of your opponents pretty quickly, so that scavenge is going to increase the durability of the parasitic growth. You also have the battering ram at five speed with opportunity and shatter being an option. Other options you have for the modern league, the gem meteor here, five speed scatter shot and piercing with four archery damage. This is going to be a key card for Waka, being able to spread that damage all across your opponent. You've got a Death Elemental with five speed, magic damage, snipe, silence, and weaken. Weaken again, being synergistic with the poison. You've got the Magi Necrosi, four speed, three magic damage with snipe, with a press, with stun. Definitely very, very good. You've got the Silent Shavi, six speed, four melee attack damage with sneak, with piercing, with cripple, uh, hitting that back unit of your opponent. You've got the Sandworm with four speed, seven melee attack damage with piercing, with sneak. And then you've got the Dark Wand as an option as well. It's got taunt, it's got scavenge, and it's going to divert attacks from your opponents onto Dark Wan. So these are all very good options for a Waka Spirit Blade team under the Modern League for a meta team composition consideration. And obviously all these options are probably superior to the existing options for death in the Poison meta right now. Other options that you need to be aware of for the Wild League here, these are some pretty crazy options. You've got the Lord of Darkness here uh, with Enrage, Stun, Retaliate. Obviously a very great card, just adding poison to that just puts it over the top. You've got the Corrupted Pegasus being a great off tank here with Reach, with Strengthen, with Tank Heal, keeping something like the Lord of Darkness or your Pelicor Deceiver in the fight. You've got the Screaming Banshee being a wild card, unknown if Blast will spread poison or not. My guess is not, but putting it here just as something to be aware of. And then you've got the Twisted Jester, four speed with Snipe. You've got the Centaur with six speed with Snipe. And you've got the Elven Cutthroat, six speed with Sneak. So all very strong options for a wild league team with Waka. So again, these are some options to be aware of. The, the Waka Death Poison team will certainly change the meta when it's unveiled. With Waka Spirit Blade's ability to spread poison all across your team by taking advantage of opportunity, scatter shot, snipe and sneak it's definitely going to be a very powerful summoner and something to also consider from an opponent perspective is if you have something like a cleanse on your team your cleanse is only going to be able to cleanse the tank position any of the other team members or monsters that get hit with waka's poison aren't gonna be able to be cleansed. And so that's just gonna be very devastating to your survivability and your ability to win a match against Waka. We'll see if the Splinterlands team comes up with a new ability to help counter Waka, maybe a version of like a triage, but with a cleanse variation to that, to maybe um, put a cleanse across the back half of your team perhaps let's see what happens but it's going to be interesting here with waka being introduced to splinterlands
What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? Let me know in the comments below. And if this video has been beneficial, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more timely content on everything Splinterlands. And until next time, keep stacking those stats.